What was your favorite thing about the 90s? Everything. Music, TV, movies. It's the best. Yeah. I like the part where you think the world's not going to end. That's a good one. I don't know. Did, were we ever there since the nuclear threat? I don't think we've ever been there. In the 90s, there. we were. Yeah, in the 90s, it was pretty. I was pretty was it? sure. I was. I was as a kid. I was like, yeah, it's. It's not. It's far off. Like, at least we're, we'll wait till like 2000s, and then it might happen. But I was pretty. Pretty. I don't ever. Safe. I was like, presidents getting blowjobs. Pretty good time to be alive. So yeah, no, I no, never. That's what, that's I never what I'm was. saying. It's like. He he, uh, Gene was say, is saying like we weren't scared that nukes were gonna kill us. Like the oh, apocalypse yeah. wasn't about to happen for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. your childhoods 90s. were so different from mine. It's crazy. My 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 nineties was my mom telling me that the FBI was tapping our phones. Ah. Oh yeah, oh, that also happened to be true. <laughs> that is exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, I. Me and my brother, my brother was a big conspiracy theorist. So like that kind of happened early where he's like, oh, yeah, they're they're like listening in fucking this is the Freedom of Information Act and, or uh, the uh, Patriot Act. They, they're able to fucking check our phones and messages and shit. And I'm like, all right. Yeah, but true. also, we well, yeah, but that was in like 2002. Exactly. exactly. When the Patriot Act. My brother was, has always been a conspiracy, like fucking nut and shit. Uh, so it was always shit like that. Uh, but yeah. Also, we're living out in the country. We're two random kids who live out in yeah. bumfuck South Louisiana. Well, they're they're gonna like go through our emails and be like, "All right, they're like ordering weed or whatever." I don't I don't know. Like, why 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 do we give a fuck? Yeah, jeans jeans was also different. His nineties was Soviet Russia. Yeah, so that's another difference. No, I was here in the nineties. We right. came here in eighty nine. So oh. my entire all of oh. my night. I'm I'm actually. A quintessentially '90s kid hmm, because I didn't even experience the '80s. You didn't experience <laughs> experience the childhood until '90. Yeah, I, I didn't have a Big Mac until 1991. So. Yeah, that nice. must have been. Tra life transforming it was it took my life from being of a healthy weight to being overweight yeah <laughs> but you probably had a lot of blue jeans right because that's big in russia they were big in the blue jeans wasn't that a thing that no I, no I actually no like that uh, wearing suits. blue jeans would get you put in the gulags to make <laughs> really yeah, yeah to you make had to slacks wear adidas you had to wear uh a jumpsuit track suits yeah, well, that's, that's awesome. No, actually, Adidas. they didn't have jeans. You would just wear like pants, like like this, slacks, basically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No sneakers. No sneakers. We actually didn't even have boots in the winter time when it's cold out. You wear uh, galoshes, basically, which is like it's like a hard a inner, rubber boot. Yeah. Yeah, inner shell, and then you put a rubber boot over it. Right. That's what we had. I yeah. wore those. Yeah. I wore those for a long time because I didn't want to learn how to tie my shoes. Oh, that's right. such a good reason. That's so true. And yeah. when you're hungry, you can take your boot. That's what you put your soup into. Yeah. Take a sip. <laughs> Maybe take a little bite out of the boot mm. too. Yeah. That's well, that's when things get really fiber. bad. What yeah. they yeah. call a Russian shoey, I guess. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. We're on the Turtle Reads here. We're going to try to do an intro. And uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> we're here with our, I think, third time guest. It's our uh, most regular guest we've had on the show so Beautiful. far. I love it. Fucking always love having you, Craig. Um, doing the for me, it's the book two and three of the Dark Tower because okay. Melissa decided to read ahead and I didn't, it wasn't just me, it's Janice and also. Janice. And whenever the, we were supposed to be talking about a co the comic book on the podcast with Janice, Melissa and Janice just started talking about the second That's book. That's such bullshit. But, that is no, such it's not. bullshit. That is exactly that what is happened. Exactly that what is exactly what happened. not what happened. <laughs> well, because you only heard it from Clay. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's anyway. not true. What happened was <laughs> here's what happened is that we got caught up in how wonderful it was that there even was a comic book, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that and that we could have the option of reading either or. We thought that was cool. So we were like just reading whichever, both one or the other, right? And but because the episode we thought was that supposed the, to be about. Excuse me, I didn't finish. <laughs> anyway, so we thought that the storylines were the same, right? Mm -hmm. But then what started to happen was that they deviated, like Very much extremely. So, yeah. right? I tried to explain for you from the beginning. So the then, comic anyway, book like is I said, I'm, I'm also not finished talking. <laughs> so for the second time, uh, so that so what happened was we were like, it would be funny if me and Janice read the book and then you read the comic book. Right. And then we just try to talk about it and it just fails. Right. We just try and then we just see how different it is. And that would yeah. be interesting. Right. And we did that. And we had the whole wow. Right. So different. And then that was it. 
And that's that's what we were doing. This was never discussed with me. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. You were fucking high is probably what happened. <laughs> I made the mistake of talking to you after you eat an entire chocolate bar of mushrooms. And that's my bad. Oh, but yeah. this no, did happen. That did not happen. It did happen. No. OK. <laughs> well, I guess the question, was it was it worth it? Was it worth it to do that? <laughs> kind of not, you know, no. obviously not. Yeah, it was just of course it was not. I was com- weird. I, I did not know what the fuck they were talking about <laughs> half the time. We did have an interesting conversation, though, uh, about comparing the two, which is that the comic book. Have you read both? Yeah. OK, so the comic book. Do you prefer one? I like the books. OK, but like, I like the oh, right, it's you two said very different things. Yeah, it's- the comic books kind of go straight to the end. Yeah. Right. They reveal all of it. Mm-hmm. Right. And then just kind of and then it becomes like this linear story. Of, it's more action, really, yeah. because of that, right? And well, it's, I mean, visuals, it's, a, it's an eighth as long as the book, too. Right. You know? So it's like these. it has to kind of get to the point, right? And then it's very action-packed because there's a lot of visuals. It's a comic book, yep. right? The book is a lot more mysterious and uh, kind of reveals the, the, the truth about what's happening very slowly. Mm-hmm. So you don't really get to the part... Um, about the spheres, all of them, and that big demon guy, right? Yeah. So, but in the comic book, it's there. So we were just, we actually were t- talking about how um, Clay actually prefers that because he likes everything to just, all of the mystery to be out of the way in that way, right? So no, that you can just en- enjoy the mystery. story. There's still mystery. Yeah, I, but it's not the same. It, you don't and you don't get like the character development you do, you know. You, you get to know these people intimately when you read the books because you, you, hear their entire life story over seven books yeah but uh that there's still like the mystery of the story that's to come ahead no like it's for sure mm. but it's different it's not it's not a slow burn you know it's much yeah. more to the point in the I, w- I would like to know more like as soon as that shit happened with the bear uh, and they're like digging in its skull and like fucking with the red string and shit mm-hmm. the, in, in its head i'm like all right i want to know more about the fucking bear and the turtle and all this shit like, mm-hmm. why was there a radio dish on his head? Is it really a cyborg or some other shit? What's up with the parasites? Why? Why? Why does it have parasites? Is it just because it's been living for fucking ever? Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes there's there's also something more real about not knowing, right? Because that's actually our actual lived experience, right? Is that you try to study Bronze Age civilizations and not, then there's more nowadays. mystery than there is. I can Google not. everything. You can't, though. <laughs> right. And you, you actually can't know everything. Yeah. There's a lot of mystery. There are um, scroll like a library of, of Greek scrolls or Roman scrolls that they discovered near uh, Pompeii. Right. That were basically incinerated, but kept intact. So they've never been able to decipher what's in them. Right. So you just have this burnt out library and then the hope that maybe something like AI will decipher them. But we don't have that yet. So there's yeah. there's a lot of history that is just kind of more an impression of of uh, extreme violence <laughs> and suffering and, and an end well, yeah. than, than anything specific. But then we just move on from that and say, fuck it. it it's not going to be doable at all. But if we have something that's super you important. You would make a terrible archaeologist. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> store it in a box safe somewhere. Cool. But like if there's something important like. <laughs> Uh, uh, the a main guardian of this fucking tower, a bear, it's right there in front of us. Like, if I was rolling in that situation, I would have cut that whole motherfucker up and and dug inside it and look what the fuck. Like, I would have well, cut I it. Mean, why? I, they're trying to. I, I would have cut it from. I don't want to chin. disappoint you, but I don't think you. I mean, you learn a little bit about the guardians, but that's not the main story. So you don't learn like the whole backstory. I mean, it's still like you get like. See? Surface level stuff. I want to know all about that fucking turtle. I want to learn. I, I would, I would have chopped that bear apart. But you still wouldn't have found like, out yeah. much. I, I, it still wouldn't have I given found you out much, more. But not enough, right? Mm-hmm. You would still not know a then lot. Then I would go hunt them all down and find that shit out. But <laughs> well, that's but he, the, that, the whole point is to find the tower. Yeah. They, don't, they don't care about the, you know. That's wait. I think what Clay's trying to say is that he's a big fan of spinoffs. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's yeah. what he wants. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. He this is the guy that his main review of Dune was that there should be more worms. There should so, be more. Well, worms. Yeah, well, that's the worms that's obvious. Should the have sand a worms are the coolest part of Dune. Yeah, easily. That's why they had him in Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a crossover yeah, right the, there. It's the worms and and spice just doing lots of drugs, drugs yeah. and worms. It's all it's all Dune should be. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this is your life that you're talking about. <laughs> so like a Hunter S. Thompson version of Dune. Yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. I would, yes. Fear and loathing in Arrakis. <laughs> I did not like oh, those movies. Oh, God, yes. That would be hilarious. You didn't like the movies? No, not at all. Well, it's hard to yeah. depict those books as a They're movie. They're really hard. It, I, I, honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of the book either, but. 
It was it was uh, pretty good. That's fair. Why like, the beginning? Like getting into it? I just I read the whole thing and I just didn't. I was like, okay. Uh, yeah. You know. No, that's fair. I, I enjoyed the uh, beginning setup with the different political factions and all that kind of shit. I I enjoy I enjoyed the political intrigue of that. How he did it and set it up. But yeah, it's like I am kind of a more action guy, so yeah, it would have been cool to get more action scenes and less like uh I think that book was amazing. It was a good book. That I'm book a- that book, uh if you're if you're at all into uh like political intrigue and geopolitics and uh maybe like anthropology, I don't fucking know, sociology, like the nature of human psychology and in like you know, like global dynamics, mm-hmm. uh, like structural, yeah. structural shit. Uh, then that book is really fascinating because he did a lot of actual research into it to build. I this mean, thing. it's incredible. Like any of those guys, what they when they with the world building, it's insane. They literally, I mean, like Tolkien created what, three languages or something. But, he didn't, but I, yeah, that's just crazy. It's just sometimes it's I don't want to read about it for fourteen hundred pages. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I did though. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. I thought it was a. It was actually like a pretty life changing book for me. I thought a lot it was of people say great. that about that specific book. It's a great general. book. Yeah, it a just lot of is. people. Yeah, I yeah. mean it's 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 well written. I just I don't know. I just couldn't get into it. I actually converted to Islam after the first page. You did. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. My, I, did, I, I converted a... to Islam in prison. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh, gay man. stuff huh <laughs> yeah no I just I really like bow ties uh, nice <laughs> and suspenders don't forget the suspenders <laughs> yeah really nice suits man yes. they dress really well yeah I have a friend who still recites the litany against evil in that book every single year and he'll read the book every year that's how much he loves that book yikes I used to read The Hobbit every spring because it was I felt it was a very springtime book yeah that's great <laughs> sometimes books are just that for you yeah. they're, they're almost like a like but a dude, I mean, spring that's cleaning like a, for that's your like brain 1800 page book that's I, I don't think I would I mean I ever, could read it pretty fast I don't think I I would there is a book I would do like annually for any reason I stopped when I got older because it was like there's too much other stuff I want to read and right. that takes away from that mm. but when I was a kid I just loved that book uh, it's a great book. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. There's only I, I think I've only read American Gods is the only book I've read multiple times. Mm. I read that in Detox. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good Detox book for th- over three days because I did nothing but <laughs> withdraw from heroin. So I read that whole book. Yeah, <laughs> I used to read this really corny novel every like year, and this was like this is almost embarrassing to me to confess, but this this book is not a good book. It is not a highbrow book. It is not a impactful but nothing it's just like young adult smut basically it's nice. not even smut really nothing even sexy happens but it's called uh mara daughter of the nile and it's uh <laughs> it's basically a a slave girl who finds herself uh, spying for both sides of a political uh, struggle for power. Sounds like a very in, in-depth young adult in, book. Uh, <clears throat> in ancient Egypt. It's really simple, though. And, oh. all, uh, you know, she, she ends up falling in love with the leader of the rebels, right, who is also working in the palace. Okay. It's like a- the ancient Egyptian world that they're living in. And then uh, and then in the end, she joins the rebel cause and, you know, f- for love. It's kind of like a female reboot of Dune. It kind of, yeah. Or even Star Wars. You know, oh. it's kind of a similar deal. That is the cool thing about reading a lot of books is you find like there aren't very many original ideas. Most of like, you know, any movie that you've seen like, oh, that's from this book or this, you know, you can always draw parallels. The hero's journey or like there's like certain there's certain tropes in books that make it into movies that they've just done to death, but they make great stories. So they just keep doing them. Sometimes I feel like people get too cynical about it, though. Like there's some people that read so much that they get to that point. But then I don't like when they talk about it because they, they they're almost so blase. And uh, and like they'd say it cynically, like, oh, I could do that if I wanted to. This is just a typical hero's journey. Well, you know what I mean? Like the not, story is not the thing that makes me fall in love with it. Certain is the character. No, you like it. I'm, I'm not saying you. I'm saying no. But I mean, like, I don't even care about that. Like the thing that makes me fall. Like you could tell the same story fifty times. Right. If there's good characters and I can and I get into that, then I'll read it over and over. And Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's not the story is is what it is but it's you fall in love with like certain people in the books that you relate to or you just think are cool and that's what keeps you reading like, like, lion king is hamlet like yeah. almost mm-hmm. verbatim i mean there's there's a million shakespeare stories yeah. that have been made into other stuff yeah you know? yeah um if you if you had to compare dark tower like book we'll do book three since two is yeah anyway um uh which oh, one boy. would you compare that to which Shakespeare? Or any any oh, kind of. I don't know. Before. I hate Shakespeare, actually. <laughs> any kind of like the Dark do Tower you really? series in general. I really do. Yeah. I really, Why? 
I, I just, I hate how it's written. I know it was of the time, but I just like, I hate when I have to read something with a translator when it's in English to know what they're talking about. Yeah. Really? But yeah. but it's not, they're not doing it on purpose. I know. He didn't do I, it to troll you, know, you specifically. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't like. I think it's actually really great because language when you like have you ever learned a second language no when i you, would speak french for a little bit when i was a kid french uh, yeah i used when i was a kid i really wanted but, to learn well, french. french canadian because my family is all does that not count as french it's it's like similar uh, to cajun yeah it's okay. like how like spanish. like spanish and portuguese are similar but different i think it's it's yeah well i think there are words in French that have no translation in English, for example, right? I think so. So when you speak French, your head goes into a different space yeah. that it wouldn't otherwise, right? So it actually stretches your your um, range of of possible thought and experience, yeah. like like inner experience. So I like reading stuff like Shakespeare or I like reading Robert Burns poetry or something because they're so alien to me mm -hmm. that it takes me a while to get into that kind of flow of language it's almost like a different language yeah. but it's accessible enough right so that and then you once you get into the flow of it it's almost like your it, your brain is different you know like for a second it changes your yeah, well, cognitive I mean, I've experience read, like, i've read like law texts because i was i applied to law school and like reading law Legalese. language yeah it's it is its own language it's it's yeah. And it's the first couple of times you read it, you have no idea. What, you have to go back and reread stuff. But then once you get into that headspace, it makes sense. Yeah. And it's, it is kind of like that with certain books, I feel like, too. Yeah, exactly. So once you get into legalese, right, you become, like you it, become uh, aut autistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. You become an asshole lawyer. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Gene's uh, stepped out. Okay. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. That's weird that you don't like Shakespeare. It's also weird that you don't like Dune. I feel like you're almost like a like a literary contrarian. No, I not at all. Because I like stuff that people, you know, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. That's a beloved. I love those. those What's your amazing. guilty pleasure book? Like something you wouldn't. Yeah, normally, you're embarrassed. And don't yeah. say Playboy. That's Most like people a real would book. be embarrassed of like uh, some Twilight shit or something. No, I, no, I never read Twilight. Uh, I, I don't read know. Twilight. That, there's nothing that I've read that I'm embarrassed to read because if I feel like. This is going to sound shitty, but I feel like if I read anything, I'm a little bit superior to most people because most people don't read. So you can't like, you know. So you never read any like young adult like kind of. I read The Hunger Games. I read all of those in about oh, okay. two days. Yeah. Okay. They were so easy to read. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. I read Twilight. It's a similar to Hunger Games kind of uh, series, but more cringe. Yeah. yeah. Very cringe. That You could tell that she's a new writer in the beginning, especially. So it, it's it, like nails on a chalkboard. Is it Twilight phrases. the one that was... I think it started as like erotic fan, fan fiction, fiction of yeah. something yeah. else that yeah. she wrote. No, that's uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. You're that's thinking about. Yeah. Fifty Shades oh, okay. of Grey was, uh, was erotic Twilight fanfic for, for Twilight, Twilight, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what. It, yeah. Which was like what a jump, but also <laughs> psychological. She was that lady was spot on. You know, they really was just about BDSM. Yeah, if you think about it, the Twilight series. Kind of. Right. I guess. Yeah, she's like fucking turned on he keeps hurting her she's like oh yeah he always <laughs> just is about to sacrifice himself for her and yeah. shit and yeah. they're constantly getting hurt and it, that turns her on well the whole premise of twilight is that he's so if you read the book he's so um strong effortlessly strong yeah that he has to control his uh strength levels around her because if he does anything yeah, carelessly he off yeah, yeah. Like, so she always has bruises and yeah. shit and she's <laughs> like you know what I mean? she's fucking moon around like, oh, you know he doesn't even know his own strength it's like what are you in the bronx like yeah. what the fuck are you talking you about the good guy the, the werewolf who's just a good guy you know yeah. just wants to take care of her yeah <laughs> i have seen the, i have seen the movies yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is just some typical. This is a typical, typical uh, like blue collar relationship somewhere, like in the Bronx. You know, it's yeah. like he's a vampire. He didn't mean to kick me down the stairs. <laughs> you know. It's, yeah, I grew up in a mill town. I, we saw a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I ran into a door. Yeah. Did you? Did you really? Though <laughs> he's a vampire. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know his own strength. One day I'm gonna be a bloodsucker too, and we could be together. I sparkle in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was wild. Yeah. Just glowing in the sun. It's like. That right. was a really weird little caveat that they added. To yeah. That. It's like, like every vampire trope has like their one thing that they do that's different than the other ones. And yeah. that was a weird thing yeah. that they chose to They're make like, that. There. Oh, instead of catching on fire, we glow. Yeah. And it's like, ah, that's we not. Like we just left the strip club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look, I'm a human disco ball. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so glamorous. Yeah, that was such an. 
Ugh. Yeah, it was ugh. Yeah. It, it's, it really was, you know, the turning point for that kind of vampire to come into existence was Anne Rice novels. Do you remember those? Oh, yeah. That was yeah. the beginning of the end for the vampire. Because bef- before that, vampires had the had the good, um, had a good balance. Like they were cursed. It was very clear that they were cursed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're a monster. Right. Yeah. And in a in human form, it's like they're a tortured soul. They're mm-hmm. trapped. Right. And, uh, and then Anne Rice. Was like she the, really did, yeah. She, she kind of like humanized the, the vampires. She 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 postmodernized them. Yeah. Like they became, became more about science. God is not even in the equation. Yeah, uh, and it's more like they're exploring this new biology they have, and and what the meaning is for them. Like what what does this make me? I'm an apex predator right. of people now. Like what is this? And it, and the tragedy was more kind of self indulgent. I feel like you know more like oh woe is me. I'm gonna yeah. eat you. Ugh, you know so sad. But then. From then on, then the the vampires just kept getting sexier and, yeah. uh, you know, like just mooning around, just being hot and eating people. And then the girls just kept throwing at them, them, themselves at, at those guys. Yeah, anyway. I, think, I think the 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 watermark of that was definitely True Blood, which I think yeah, were, also, yeah, were also books, too. Right. I think those were. Uh, yes, they were. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, I think I read part of one. Part of the one of the first ones, and then I, but then I watched the series. I watched the series. The series was good. The series I, was I good. I liked it. Yeah, I was a fan. I liked all. Eight. I like everything HBO does. Anyways, they they do good shit. Yeah, but I always love vampires, werewolves, vampires and werewolves. That's kind of my. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of the Underworld series? Underworld, the movies. Yeah. Underworld was pretty good. Yeah, that was like a Scott Speedman, fucking action packed. He's a never werewolf. He is a vampire really? also. No. I mean, I've seen like parts of them, but I've never sat down and watched. I I, I like uh, Mila Jovovich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it that series I find does a good like balance of like werewolf vampire war mm-hmm. with like a scientific like they shoot they have special bullets that could fuck up vampires as well as like uh, or, or yeah vampires and then they ha- develop something that could deal with werewolves and then one dude at one point becomes a vampire werewolf hybrid and. That dude's just it, it, that part is badass as fuck. I love it. it it's a pretty good series. I, like I it. think it's good. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Uh but they made what, like four or five of those movies or something? Or? Yeah, four. I think. Yeah. They were I think they were pretty satisfying for the most part. I don't know, but I don't remember the fourth one. But at one through three for sure. I was like, yeah. all right, pretty cool, you know? Fuck yeah. Uh Scott Speedman, very hot, very nice. Yeah, yeah and very, very like Matrix feel with like a lot of leather coats. Like that was every movie that came out <laughs> yeah, after the Matrix. That period. Every single movie yeah. Late- was latex exactly that. was yeah. so yeah. in. It was weird, <laughs> weird kung fu with leather jackets. Yeah. Everybody wanted latex. <laughs> Most people don't look good in latex. This is yeah, a problem. No. You know? I wonder if the kink of latex really kicked off after that period, though. You know? Like if people started getting morph suits. I don't and know. those like latex doggy suits. You ever see those? Like it's like skin tight latex suit, and then you got a dog face, but it's latex. It's like leather. Oh, it's latex. aren't those called cat suits though? Aren't I have those no body suits called cat suits? I think I don't know. No. they got dog ones now. What? Do you mean the gimp suit type thing? I think yeah, or? that's what I'm thinking. I think those are called cat suits. No, they're, they're called gimp suits. The regular one with that that's not latex is called a morph suit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one with latex uh, with the mask. You and know, everything. A surprisingly, a lot about the differences between these different types of suits. Well, recently, you know, he wants to dissect uh, mechanical bears, right? Yeah. He really wants to get into the nitty gritty of latex <laughs> uh, body suits. I've recently <laughs> had to look up a lot of different stuff about body suits. Oh for yeah, a, of course. A project for, I re- for, a for project. research. Yeah. I'm doing research. <laughs> Got a hot date, huh? <laughs> all right, very nice. <laughs> well, all right. This third installation uh, installment, right, would be the right word. Yeah. Yep. This third installment of um, Dark Tower, I think, for now, it, for me, it most resembles uh, that book that we actually did recently, Blood Meridian, mm-hmm. but just oh. with, with magic. You guys did Blood Meridian. We did yeah. Blood Meridian. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Oh man, I yeah. didn't know. We should have brought you on. Cormac McCarthy. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was my first Cormac McCarthy book. I read that book. And it made me understand why people liked poetry because I hate poetry. <laughs> you just, hate everything. I just well, I you hate, hate everything but the Hobbit. It's an, igno- it's You're an ignorant. Thing. No, it's an ignorant <laughs> thing for me because I just don't get. Like I've never read poetry that like oh this is this speaks to me. And mm-hmm. I when I read Blood Meridian, the writing is so good and like his prose are so amazing. I'm like oh this is why people like poetry because oh, sure. it like it kind of speaks to you not just what's on the page but just like how he's saying experience it. like inner yeah. experience. And oh, I love that book. The yeah. Judge is just one of the. I just saw. A movie where they tried, they made, it was Woody Harrelson who was basically playing the judge from Blood Meridian, but not as cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Woody Harrelson, really? Yeah. Yeah, And they talk about how he's, because the judge is like, 
even back then he's like six eight, right? Yeah, he's, he's huge, he's hulking yeah. character, almost seven foot tall, and fucking they, giant. Yeah, they talk about how big Woody Harrelson is, but then he stands next to everyone else in the movie, and he's just like a six numb. inches shorter than yeah. them. <laughs> so it's like I don't. <laughs> That's so disappointing. I yeah. hate when they do that. Yeah, they. Uh, my mom was big and got big into the Reacher novels, and then mm-hmm. they did the Tom Cruise Reacher yeah. movie. And the whole thing about the Reacher novels. He's an enormous human. He's a seven <laughs> foot tall freak of a man yeah. who just like fucks up everyone. And then it's Tom Cruise. We yeah. all know what Tom Cruise's size, even if you have him in a he, fucking. He puts, on, he puts on his heel inserts. He's yeah. like, I'm ready. Heel inserts. And, <laughs> like, what? and the perfect camera angle is only going to make him six five. Yeah. Like you're only making him so, so much taller. Yeah. That it, the new one, the show on Amazon is fantastic. Alan Richardson yeah. is a giant man, yeah. and it's perfect. He's great. He, yeah, I, I love. It. At one point, he just front kicks the bumper of a car in and b- makes the airbag go off just yeah. by front kicking it. And I'm like, that's perfect. That's fucking yeah. great. Just a simple scene of like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck this dude. Hey, <laughs> what do you think the judge symbolizes in that book? If you had to say like cosmically, like what the big symbol of what he represented throughout that book? What do you think it is? I asked uh, Justin O'Donnell. I just want to know what you think. I don't know. I haven't really. I just, he's just my favorite bad just guy. Just say whatever flies out of your mouth. I don't care. Bad guy that I've ever seen. He's so. But he he meant something, though, throughout that book. He was more than just a character, even. He was kind yeah, of. A, he, was he was also like, kind of a meta character. He yeah, was well, I don't know if like he's like the, the embodiment of evil or like like what, you know, what war is supposed to be. It's kind of this guy. Like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's always there. And I don't know. He's just so fucking cool. I mean, there's no, I. You're attracted to that. Yes. Uh, not not him. I'm not saying that you're attracted to him. I probably I'm just am. saying like. Yeah, sexually, I think I am. I, <laughs> he does seem like a good person to hug. Yeah. Right. Very cuddly until he snaps your that neck. That opening scene where he like he gets them to to like basically kill that preacher, and then they're like, "Where did you meet up with him before?" He's like, "I've never seen that guy before in my life." After <laughs> just convinced him he's like a pedophile, and they all like jump on him and beat the shit out of him, and he's like, "I don't know." And then the end scene where he like kills and rapes the kid. Which yeah. doesn't actually say, but I've read stuff that's saying that's that's probably what happened. Like he pulls him into the outhouse and they just that other guy comes along. He's like, Whoa, don't go in there. They're doing some weird shit in there. Yeah. Damn. Do you think that really happened though? Because it's kind of up in the air whether that was real. I don't know. I, I only think that happened because I, I would I was so obsessed with that book for a while. I would watch like like Harvard and Yale lecturers like talk about that book. Oh, and they sweet. Would, they anything would, good? You find anything good? There was a lot of just like Bullshit. confusing stuff but they would they would dissect the ending of it because it is so ambiguous when they write they don't really say it's like he just opens it up he's standing there he pulls him in and then a guy opens the door and sees what's happening yeah. and he's like don't don't go in. books like that i love when you can find a good youtube video that explains the philosophy behind yeah. it it's so amazing i saw twin peaks and then i saw we saw a video about uh the philosophy behind twin peaks like mm-hmm. explaining certain parts of it that were maybe a little too esoteric yeah and it was amazing mm-hmm. i was like actually kind of looks like you're sitting in the blue lodge right yeah it now. does yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a red lodge backwards. but this is the blue lodge yeah this it's is not, the not blue so lodge. intense yeah but you think the, <laughs> the, the sound studio for the, the Black wastelands lodge. is kind of like blood meridian I feel like it's it, it reminded me a lot of it and the only thing that was different were just more uh mystical you know magical realism kind of elements yeah. and uh that's it I mean they are on a quest but I mean it was this it's kind of just the quintessential quest novel right they're yeah well they were both westerns and they both focus on uh brutality in the west you know like wild west I, I brutality I don't see the gunslinger so much as a we- I mean it, it's like western tropes but I mean, it's, it's called not- a gunslinger it, start, it yeah. started off as a western but it's especially by the third novel like especially you're getting to there's a talking train yeah uh, like it's it's goes from western to high fantasy really quick sci-fi in the third, too, yeah. sci-fi it's like kind of a mesh of everything he's still a cowboy though throughout yeah but he's a cowboy well, traveling I mean, he, like with, Stephen uh, King has <laughs> said he modeled him after Clint Eastwood yeah the good the bad and the ugly that's right. like that's what he used he's just like Clint Eastwood in the future Clint Eastwood in this scenario Clint Eastwood in uh you know like a mutant uh colony in the in the sewers right it's just Clint Eastwood in all these weird situations yeah so yeah and the what do you think about the AI train that that part's dope I really like the AI train or whatever you call him Charlie or or Blaine 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 is Blaine is great um I, I love the fact that he just offhandedly is like, all right, I'm going to nuke this city. Yeah, Solve the riddle. We're about to nu- get fu- blow this place up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jan- great. Janice actually uh, ordered the uh, Choo Choo Train book. She found it. 
Really? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. The original uh, one. That that'd be interesting to read. <laughs> yeah. Well, she could bring it next time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that'd be fun. Is that kind of like a allegory about how the world's gonna end? That an autistic train yeah <laughs> like, like, it's gonna autism go mad. is gonna it's destroy gonna... the world yeah dump poison gas on everyone yeah <laughs> yeah the train uh which is basically connected to all of the life support systems of that city why the fuck would you do that? I don't know, because they're stupid. That's why. That's really <laughs> it's dumb. Like, I haven't, I haven't yeah. even read this, just for context. Yeah. But the train is the train. It's, uh, a, it's like a living train. It has a... Uh, but why is it plugged into the life support systems? It's not a mo mode of transportation? It, it, it was. is also. Yeah. It was supposed to be like a luxury uh, railway. But why yeah. is it tied into the life support of the city? As I don't know. To it's just, just a futuristic city. Uh, that, oh, and it's uh, all kind of integrated? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a completely integrated uh, general intelligence that basically runs the life support systems of the city. And the from train. A, from a sub-level. It just so happens to train. also be a train. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. it seems to prefer to put its consciousness inside of the train. Yeah. So that it, so can, it can drive around. Yeah. Well, autism. It, it yeah. Can, it can, <laughs> exactly. That sounds very apropos yeah. for AI. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, where would you like to be uh, located? In train. a train. Train. I love trains. <laughs> I want to be a train. I mean, the tr being in the train does a allow it to actually move and kind of like get a sense of how every city's doing that it's connected to a longer regimented path yeah with so. very precise stops yes mm -hmm. exactly on a schedule that I absolutely cannot deviate from. Why would you do that? Well, no, it, does, it does get deviate because it gives them 10 minutes to get out of the city before he nukes it and then he pauses that mm -hmm. and says all right we're to solve the riddle let's do this riddle thing or uh they they offer it a riddle what happens yeah. is that there are two we should always have somebody who hasn't read it because it makes us talk about the actual plot lines but yeah, yeah uh mm. you know because otherwise we wouldn't do this we yeah. just we would just kind of talk about the fucking yeah, I underworld represent the movie the ignorant masses <laughs> yeah. to whom you're speaking Please, gene help us help us help them uh so there was there were two trains originally at least right and one seemed to be female the other was like male and they were friends mm. one of them the female one seems to have just fallen into a hole somewhere or, or stopped functioning or, or actually no i think it committed suicide because oh. uh, they, you know, the city is, has just devolved into these primitive tribes that are just murdering each other and sacrificing their own tribesmen to the train, you know, like as a, uh, a d offering to a god, right? Like, like an evil uh, turn of the century evildoer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tying people to the tracks and <laughs> yeah. twirling your mustache. Now, I think it's even worse. They just hang them, you know, they, they hang them. And everybody cheers, and then they go away, and they come back, and they do it again, right? So, like they hang them above the tracks, and the train hits them. They just hang them. They just hang just them. Just hang them, them up. near the near the track, not like on the tracks or anything, and not on the train. Oh. They just hang some people. They're too stupid. To, they're too <laughs> stupid to even make that connection. Okay, mm. they don't even know. So it, it seems like the the train actually had some role in making them regress to this primitive state, but uh, the female one just didn't want to live anymore. She killed herself, right? While all this shit is going on. And then the male one stayed alive, running the city, uh, manipulating the citizens, but also going insane. Wait a minute. You think this is kind of an allegory for Stephen King's personal life? It could be well, a lot every, of it is. Everything that Stephen King ever wrote is basically an allegory for addiction. Yeah, and if a you, thinly like, veiled one, yeah. too. He, everything he does is about, is about addiction. It, Pretty much. Was, he, was he an addict of some sort? Oh yes, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Shit well, ton of cocaine. Cocaine? Yeah, yeah. Well, he did everything. Yeah. I mean, and like the whole the guy who was like blindly seeking the tower that's an allegory for addiction right yeah. there you know it, I mean, it's everything he does literally is, one of the characters in one of the main the three the was prisoner, a heroin addict, is a yeah. heroin addict uh uh eddie he he in the book he he was a heroin addict before roland brought him into the uh this world from the real world or our world uh he was a heroin addict and he had to fucking like kind of break it because there was there's no heroin in that dark tower world. Yeah, he, he quit yep. cold turkey. No, no. He had to quit cold my, turkey. my question is, what does the legless civil rights black woman activist represent for him? Like, what could possibly? Yeah, that was. What could that yeah. possibly have come from? I think he dated a black chick or something. That that, <laughs> that much is clear, right? Some kind of black chick who was just always calling him white boy or something. And I think he incorporated <laughs> that into the story. Uh, for and that. the, but the beyond relationship that, didn't go anywhere. Which is why she has no, had legs. no legs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we figured it out, guys. I listen to this in on book on tape, and there's one guy who reads the whole thing. And <gasps> he does the black chick. Yeah, 
And he, he says that, and he says the N word a bunch of times. <laughs> Wait, how do Stephen I get, King just throws the N word into a lot of stuff. Oh man, how do so I get that crazy. job? Yeah, I listened to <laughs> she it too. didn't even know you could do that. I listened to both of them on tape. Uh, one of them, the first one, or I, I actually did it because I can't fucking Spotify is fucking weird. I did it on YouTube. The first one, it was a chick, not that good uh, at reading it. The second one, read by. A guy named David Tyndall. He read it fucking really. Is that well. on Spotify? No, that was on YouTube. Oh, it's. Uh, the guy, I can't remember the guy's name who read it. He was good, but it was just like, oof, I don't know if I'd. Ah, want come that on. Or. I mean, what are we doing with this word? I mean, it's it's everywhere. It's in every rap lyric. It's it's like in, <laughs> in all the books. It's like is what are we, is this like some weird you know like the thing about rap cultural, cultural? Most of them written by black people. It's like yeah, but not all <laughs> of them. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> but it's but the consumer is white. Right. Man. So it's yeah. like most you go to a concert, they're white, right? A bunch of white people show up for like a Kendrick Lamar concert, right? Well, and that's then he's the singing rule. the lyrics. You can sing it, you just can't say it. That's, that's the known rule. I don't even think that's the rule. <laughs> no, I think Craig is right. I mean, you should only be able to say it if you are one. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Gene. Dude, yeah. Thanks for the insight. I love that we're about to make this stand on a book podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying it's it's so ridiculous. You can only say it if you are one or if you're singing a rap song or if one cuts you off in traffic. I don't know. There's yeah, something. No, I, I really something. I think it's true because then every black person can say say it yeah that's true mm -hmm. there but are certain black people who cannot say the right, word we get what you're trying to for do for lack here. of you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. okay <laughs> you know Coleman like if you, Hughes, if for example cannot say it cannot say it absolutely no, absolutely I get not that. now let's come up with a list of people who can say it <laughs> the grand wizard of the clan <laughs> All right, because uh, he's going to do it anyway. Good luck getting yeah. him not to say it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really make a rule for that guy. Well, by virtue of saying it so much, then he is one. Yeah, exactly. He must be one. He probably is one. Yeah. But but I'm saying like it's like we're doing like this cultural edging of this word constantly. And it's, well, when you make it sound like that, it's kind of sexy. It is. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. I'm saying I'm saying that there is an ulterior motive for it. I think people get off on. Almost, but not quite saying it, alluding to it, right? I think that's, I think it's just uh, completely, well, it's a kink. Well, that's, that's, that's Louis C.K. bit, isn't it? Of, he's like, you yeah. make me think it yeah. to where we yeah. don't, you don't have yeah. to say exactly. it. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. It's also, like when women show like only, most of their tits, but not all of the tits. <laughs> it's like, you're just making me think of your tits, right? Yeah. It's like you say, yeah. you say N word, I got to think of it so, just to put the dots together in my head. It's all those shit, those things. It's like, is there N word porn? Oh, I'm sure well, there is. Oh, yeah. But it depends I'm sure what you there mean. is. <laughs> Sorry, Guarantee. my ADD kicked in. <laughs> Guarantee, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, is there N-word porn? There's, yeah. there's multiple amputee porn. There's certainly N-word yeah. porn. Well, how about uh, <laughs> N-word <laughs> ASMR? <laughs> oh. That would be great. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would be so amazing. Man. Yeah. I, well, I think right. that's actually how we heal as a society from the thing because, you know, legitimately it's a word that uh, brings up a lot of trauma connotation to uh, certain people. Mm -hmm. But the only way to get over trauma is to face it. Ex yeah, face it. But also you can't be overexposed to it. You have to kind of, you know, approach it very gradually. Kind of inoculate mm -hmm. yourself. Which with, is why, uh, you know, we should, we should maybe do the ASMR. Maybe not the whole thing. Yeah. Just this <laughs> J Justin's looking at the timestamp so he knows where to block it off. I've been, trying to, I've been wanting to say it for the last five minutes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because then it just makes you want to say it. This is deranging. It's it's crazy. I don't know. I, I'm you know glad. Thank God Stephen King is just doing the work. You know, just pe peppering all his he, novels oh, with the man, N word. He says it a lot. It's Good. in it's in most of. Is uh, it older lately. work or? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think he's done it in anything 80s, recently 90s? that I've read, but eight, 80s for sure, 90s probably, yeah. Well, actually, 2012 was when that JFK book was released, right? Yeah. He says it in that one. Okay. That's 2012. Yeah, he, he does a, he, a good bit, but that also that's but that a takes place in the 60s, yeah. yeah he's really he, double N down. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. I'll give it to you. <laughs> I would, I would be yeah. interested. <laughs> Points for that one. Justin pulls out a gun, just shoots himself in the head. <laughs> I would be interested to get an inward count on all the different most po uh, popular authors. Like how much Stephen King has used the inward in his books. How much Neil Gaiman I'm, has. I'm sure. AI for that. I'm sure. There's yeah. There's that's out there. Just use ChatGPT. That would be hilarious to see who's who's used the most N words in all of literature. Mark Twain, probably. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's kind of the OG. The OG, yeah. pretty high up there. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the characters literally has it in his name. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case, in, well, ca- in case you didn't know when you were reading it. Yeah. No, I, didn't know. yeah. I mean, uh, maybe not, because actually uh, there there is a lot of uh, black literature uh, novels that re- revolve around basically black life here. Right. Oh, yeah. And they say the N word way more. We read. Yeah. That, this like this whole got roaches, roaches in, in, her, her crib. in her crib. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quan Mills. He, he uses the N word a bunch. So that would uh, it. Yeah, oh, okay. It would it would have to be one of those books. But does he use it with the ER or the A? Both. Both. Yeah. In the book, just always. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'd we'd have some modern day black authors who would who would be right there up there with Mark Twain and Stephen King. The and, greats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We can we can hold an award ceremony every year. It is though, but whenever Stephen King uses it, it's always in like it's like somebody calling somebody else that you know what yeah. I mean. It's it's a derogatory. But it's kind of what stand up people do, right? Like you're doing stand up, you kind of put. I have never done that in stand up yeah. ever, <laughs> nor would I ever. Well, do you even do act outs? No. So there you go. If you ever did one, though, you would be doing that, right? You would say horrible things through another person's face, right? ostensibly and then uh you would pretend that you didn't say it it was said well, through this character oh well i've seen a lot of comics try to do yeah try to be the the white guy who cracks the n-word puzzle and <laughs> it always fails yeah. in spectacular fashion it's, <laughs> yeah, it's one like of a, my favorite things it's like, like no, 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 I, got, I, got I got it i got it i got oh, it yeah. i got this one yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've had that we've had that so many times on open mics here of like the white dude go up on the open mic just like i figured it out I've got the perfect wording yeah. for the perfect joke that will make it. And it never, and it's yeah. like, you they walk off stage yeah. and every person's just like, why? And then they try to have the debate, yeah. the conversation of, well, this is why this works and I can do it this way. And it's like, ah, now, did anyone laugh? To who? Who did, did, who anyone, did they explain it to? To the other open micers who are like, yo, dude, that was that that didn't work. Maybe work it out a different way. And then they just, yeah, you know. they try I mean, to look, double down. Open micers. Did you pull the swatch up to them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, where are no. you that would be funny just on the wall just have like a color palette yeah. as they walk out it's like uh, mulattoes quadroons blacks over here right uh, like like when they have the height scale at a grocery <laughs> store yeah. you must be this you must be this black to ride <laughs> ride or die <laughs> if you're not this dark don't say it yeah <laughs> yeah Hell yeah. Some guy's just tanning all week long for the open mic. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, you just described Rachel Dolezal's entire career. Yeah. <laughs> Who I Dude, love. Ooh, did she ever say, actually say the N-word? Who knows? Probably. I'm sure she yeah, I'm sure most he, people have Probably said while, it. while she was getting her hair locked, you know, to the to her hairdresser or uh, something When was like that. the last time you screamed it? Yeah. <sighs> Uh, January 30. 30- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be yeah, amazing. I don't, I don't know last time I screamed it. Was. Last time I stubbed my toe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> do, do people and ironically, it? two weeks later, it turns black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you cursed your toe. <laughs> He's a Is magician. That how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I lose stuff a lot in my shitty apartment, and I get like furiously angry, and I'll throw down some. I'll scream some racial slurs sometimes. Not anyone in particular, just because I'm trying to say the worst thing. That's all right. What's yeah. What's yeah. the go-to? I probably the N word, or are there others? I mean, I'll do that too, but usually not the N word. I'm, uh, I have a very diverse palate when it comes to racial slurs. I'll throw in a bunch of different ones and just hmm. let's you know. hear them. <laughs> oh, Justin, to, uh, yeah, yeah, I want to come over to my apartment later where I try to find my house key. Everybody, let's <laughs> let's list our words. Craig, you go first. No, thank you. Well, <laughs> the, the the advantage of being uh, bilingual or multilingual is that when you you know when you're angry, you can curse in, in another language. Oh yeah, Gene. Oh, yeah. Gene yeah, is yeah, I like, just go straight to Russian. He does. And I'll say all the slurs. I nice. know something happened to Gene when all of a sudden I hear "bliat," <laughs> I'm like, all right, what happened? Let me go check on Gene. <laughs> I'm pretty simple. Like whenever I'm, I get really pissed off. I like I, I changed it up a little bit because I'm just weird. But I generally just go with like "son of a whore." Uh, that's a, that's a, "son of a whore" is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Keep it simple. Yeah. Slut shaming a little bit. Pig fucker. Yeah. That's yeah. I say that a lot. Now. <laughs> pig fucker. That's so specific. That's mm. yeah, pretty specific. Hmm. Why pig fucker? I I don't know because I'm just trying to like diversify. <laughs> Watch the Black Mirror episode a bunch. Oh yeah, the first Black Mirror episode. No, I don't. it was it, they made a politician fuck a pig on live TV. 
All right, let's get back on track with this book. All right, <laughs> let's get back on track with this book. All right. Uh, so anyway, Stephen King, N word. That's where we left off. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. All right. Cool. So um, this plant, this uh, train, rather. Uh, is riding uh, on this rail. Basically, all the main characters get trapped inside the train, and the train is going to commit suicide now. But it wants to commit suicide with them in it. So, like a murder it's like suicide. A postmodern Agatha Christie book. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 Murder on the Blaine Express. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the train likes riddles, so they yeah. they make a deal if they can out if they can stump him with a riddle, then he has to let him live. Right. But if they can't, he's going to commit suicide with them on the train when they get to Topeka. What do you think about that? What do you think about riddles in general? I Well, again, it just brought me back to The Hobbit where I was like, just ask him what's in your pocket. Just ask him what's <laughs> in your pocket. He won't know. Like, and I can't believe he didn't do that. But then I like the way they ended it. But I mean, like, yeah. just How did they back. end it? Tell, tell Gene, please. Uh, well, he... he <laughs> The Eddie, the the junkie, ex junkie, like just asked him a bunch of like dumb riddles, like what has what is the four wheels and flies a garbage like, but stuff that has no answer and it gets the machine so angry because they're silly joke. They're not riddles, they're jokes. He basically tells them a bunch of dumb jokes, right? That it like he kills them with dad jokes. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Essentially, he that's just, kind of interesting because AI really doesn't get comedy. That's one yeah. thing that you we can still hang our hat on because that trope of you know confusing a robot with a self-referential yeah. Cohen and it just kind of spirals and explodes. That's been used, you know, I, I don't imagine that the Stephen King novel was the first instance of that. No, I'm it's sorry. probably, you know, that, that concept, but the Why thing that's kind of lasted is the fact that AI just can't, it just can't wrap its stupid fucking ones and zeros around comedy. Yeah. If you, if you try to get chat GPT to write jokes, it'll attempt something that, is structured like comedy, but it just doesn't get what's funny. It's always like corny or dad jokey or very. Uh, Why do you think that is? Because it lacks exp uh, an internal experience. That's what I was thinking. And even if it were conscious in a legitimate way, it still lacks human experience yeah. and consciousness. It's simply collective experience. It simply doesn't have a an embodied thing by which it can experience the world. I guess yeah. it can do it virtually in a virtual setting. It, it could simulate it. It could live many lives as humans. In fact, that's kind of one of the uh, points of evidence that we're living in the sim simulation is that we're actually different yeah. aspects of AI learning how to be human by simultaneously being all of humanity at once. What if it's, it's trying to learn how to write a joke and that's why we're all here? In a sense, that's you know kind of what, I mean? what I'm like, saying. Yeah. Our, our world, as far as we know, is only comedy really right why is that is that real or is that what contrived? world is only comedy like for us right we're all somehow nah, there's a lot of tragedy <laughs> well but even we use tragedy for comedy here yeah right so that that, that does that doesn't really uh go against this argument what i'm saying is that isn't it weird that we're all in this comedy club all the time right <laughs> and is it by choice right or are we aspects of ai and it has all of the tiers of a comedy experience from open micer to door guy who's dabbling in comedy to uh, high level Kurt Metzger comedy uh, to Rebecca Trent running comedy clubs, right? To Justin running comedy club slash studio, right? It's like all this stuff together. Um, is it, it just, Wait, are you, we just you a part pointed of AI? at me when you said high level Kurt Metzger? Are you saying I'm a high level Kurt Metzger? I'm saying comic? you know Kurt Metzger, relax. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> get it, get it, get it. Let's, let's focus here all right let's stay focused uh your your career is doing great you're doing great no, you're a very I'm funny guy it. yeah right? I'm you're it. amazing <clears throat> you're wonderful you're very funny hey you just killed in maine right yeah just you, killed you in went, maine that was fucking great yeah right. it was a really really fun how yeah. was that it was awesome you had some crazy instagram stories it, well the thing was also don't you notice how we went off that conversation all of a sudden was that contrived is that like AI trying no, to deviate I definitely us from did this that conversation? On I definitely did that on purpose. Yeah, but you could just be, I don't know who you are. I don't, know if, I don't even know if you're real, right? So like oh, most God. of the time you do comedy in front of like what? Like it's like you guys, but I mean the audience is mostly like strangers, right? Maybe there's one girl you brought with you that you're trying to sleep with. or You know, this was, I walked in and I, I should have realized it was going to be this, but I did. I walked in and I knew every single person in that room. You didn't realize that that was going to happen? No. I Well, I didn't think until I saw, you know, when I saw it, then it became real. Oh. And like people are trying to talk to me and I'm like, yep. And I just went, the green room is just like a little like curtain. It's like you just go behind there and you're in this room. 
And Mike comes in, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I've had like four panic attacks already. Right? Like my yeah. parents were there. My brothers were there. My high school wrestling coach was there. There was a woman that I met at my job at the hotel who was from New England. And she's like, we got talking about where we were from. I'm like, yeah, I'm going back up to do this thing. And so she's like, oh, I'm going to go to your show. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I walked outside to smoke. She's like, hey, Craig. And she was there. She like came up from Boston or what? It was fucking weird. Were you like doing a like, a, like, like headlining a homecoming show or no, something? No, I was doing a show with Mike I was Eden. doing a feature set for Mike. So I was doing 20 minutes before Mike. Oh. And like I walked out and like I got a standing ovation when I walked on stage, which is weird. I got one when I left. Like Have I had you, to tell them this. I had to like the uh, guys stop. You've never were, done this before? <laughs> that's never happened to me before. Has that ever happened to you before? Yeah, one time. Are you from a small town? It was all yeah. Puerto Rican for her. Yeah. Oh. Well, Puerto Rican and Dominican. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I when, guess. I, took a, I made a joke. No, yeah. When, Car- <laughs> when Caroline's on Broadway was still open, mm-hmm. uh, they would do a comedy breakout series, breakout artist series. Yeah. So I got selected for one of those headlining shows. Okay. And, uh, and I mean, the understanding, I mean, is that it's a bringer. You know, it's a yeah. giant, giant bringer because yeah. it seats like, 240 people I think yeah. right and I really wanted to knock it out of the park and I really wanted to have it a good show right so I I messaged people I reached out to people yeah. I like followed up I had a whole list of people and shit but the thing is is that I'm from New York City right yeah. so it, all of these people that I grew up with um, just people from all of my walks of life yeah. showed up uh, my high school drama teacher showed up <laughs> Dr. Habibian <laughs> and then she was like walking around taking pictures and shit and um, um, just all friends from everywhere, and it was like that. It's yeah, like you get on stage, they fucking go crazy. But then it's once a you get completely into it, different experience. Once you get into it, it's just another show. But it's like better than another show. Everything leading up to that is like terrifying. Yeah. Why? Well, I don't know. For me, it's because uh, I kind of like the aspect of stand up where you're kind of skulking around a dark room alone. You know, you're kind of you're like sh- sh- you know shuttling through aisles, right? Yes, I love it's, that. It's That's like my I like, favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I like the theater experience, right? And I like then you go backstage, yeah. right? And you're and you you can just be in your own head but have this environment that you like you know very cool dark yeah uh but it's like bustling you know no. it's busy but nobody's looking at you and mm-hmm. you and you're just you're just kind of flowing through it i think it's that's just what i like about new york actually the comic who's also a book nerd likes to be antisocial. no way <laughs> yeah is that a big surprise <laughs> <laughs> i like being social but i don't know i i prefer i like stand-up because i i just prefer that social dynamic you know i yeah. like well, then being, I had to go out. I like giving people something, and but also please stay six feet away from me at I didn't all want, times. Well, I didn't want to go out there in Mike's set because I didn't want people to like get up and come over. Because like there were people there to see me specifically, not him. He did great. And uh, like, so I had to sit in the green. And then I walked out and it was like, everyone wanted, everyone wants to come and wants five minutes. And it's like, there was a hundred people in there. And it's like, I, this is exhausting. This is hell for me right yeah. now. There was like five people I want. Everyone else is like, I really appreciate you coming. It's awesome, but I don't want to talk to like all these people. I don't ever want to do that. But the, these are kind of like proto fans. Like this is the experience of having yeah. a fan base. Yeah. So, um, what about when, when, or if you know if that's what you want? If you get to a point where you have a fan base, a, yeah. a dedicated following, I mean, it's gonna be like that. They're gonna feel like family. Who yeah, wants you, to and come you can't and talk blow them to you. off too. Can't right? blow them off. That's your fa- that's your money. Their story is that you're an asshole. Yeah. That, it's yeah. really just a really tough situation yeah. to be in. Now you're Chris Kattan. Everyone wants a Everybody's piece like, of you. Fuck you. And I, I didn't. I didn't blow any, Like I went and talked to everyone, but I was like, I was like sweating. I, I didn't like it. I, you know, I like just walking off. Like good set, bad set. Then you just go out, hang out in the back and smoke cigarettes. Yeah, like that's what desperado. I like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the move is to leave before the show is over, yeah. right? And within like the last ten minutes of whoever's up last. Or the headliner, yeah. you, you just get away. It's amazing. I know you're not the type of comic to generally. You don't have any real merch that you sell or yeah. anything. Would you ever do merch, and what kind would you do? I, I do like stickers or t-shirts or something. I mean, it's a great way to make money if you're on the road. Yeah. I think it's almost kind of a necessity if you have a fan base because yeah. you're not going to make. You know, That's when you're thinking. first starting out doing smaller rooms, even if you sell it out, you're not going to make that much. You know, if you can make an extra five hundred bucks selling merch for sure. That's what I was thinking for that show. That would have been a perfect one to have merch yeah, for. Yeah, I probably sure. should have. I was gonna get some stickers <laughs> made, but I just got lazy with it. I mean, like we and when I say we, I mean me. Mike didn't <laughs> but he didn't have to. It was my idea to go up. It was my thing. So I was promoting this thing for like six months before we went up there. You yeah, you I mean? were. Yeah. That's so why I was yelling at you the other night. Yeah, I was no. drunk though, yeah. admittedly. But yeah. That was funny. I was like, where are you going up there? <laughs> yeah. Why are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> you get to see Craig's just like, please don't turn. <laughs> please. But it's a, it's a great room and a, it's a really fun. Portland's a fun city. Mike almost ate himself to death. That was. Oh, there's so much oh, good yeah. food there. And yeah. Mike loves to eat. 
He, 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 he eats amazing stuff. I love his Instagram yeah, stories. Yeah, I didn't realize you could be that fat of a piece of shit when you ate good food. I thought you had to only eat bad. He eats like only like the best shit, but he eats, you know. He's a lot of it. That's the way to do it. Because yeah. he loves food. Yeah. yeah. That's what me and Gene, we love eating. That's why, that's that's the only reason why we, or at least me, that's why I work out. Oh, me too. Yeah. To just be able to eat. Yeah, you just eat clean all week, but then one day. Yeah, Armageddon I had to share a Saturday. hotel room with Mike and he fucking snores like, oh, duh. it's insane. He probably I has sleep apnea. Oh, for sure he does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's it's, the thing about- It's crazy that only fat people, like, they sleep, like, it's no, like, they can sleep through anything, but they just keep everyone else in, within 500 <laughs> feet awake. And well, it drives well, me nuts. Yeah. We don't know that we snore. <laughs> like Craig, Craig, We're uh, asleep when defense. it's happening. Right. All right? Coming to defend a <laughs> you fat snorer. Yeah. No, I he didn't. knew he snore. When I asked him, like, do you snore? He's like, yeah, I snore really bad. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know. But he knew. I didn't know until, like, two years ago that I snore. <laughs> Uh, my uh, like I came over here and I started living with Dallas and like three other people Dallas gets here he's like man you sounded like a bear last night and I'm like <laughs> wait I snore he's like yeah you right? snore yeah, I, I think hear when you you're from- a bigger person you can just assume you snore yeah you <laughs> got to I, I assumed I didn't because I sleep pretty well during the night it's not like I'm like like Waking That's the up. thing you don't. If you ever got like a CPAP or something, then you find out what real like good sleep is really like. I bet your mind will be fucking blown. Yeah, Possibly, yeah. but it's not like I wake sleep. up because like I I can't breathe or anything. You I've know? been really fat before. I'm, like I've weighed like two sixty. Like I've just gotten out of, and I would I would wake myself up. I'd be snoring. So yeah. like but like That's but never honestly, you can't me. breathe. Yeah, you, know you stop I mean? breathing. That's yeah. what wakes you up. Never happened to me ever. But so that, that, I always that, that you're assume. aware of though. Yeah, it could be. Well, I never wake up because of it. I know a guy who's like that. He he would sleep through it, but when he got um he went to get a checked out that he it was he did a sleep test and it was like yeah he stopped breathing like multiple times that he had he had to get one of those uh like darth vader helmets those like aviator my ex used to wake me up when i i I was not that heavy then this was like a couple years ago she'd wake me up and be like hey breathe because you would stop she's like you'd stop breathing for like 30 45 seconds that's terrifying that's a fun thing to get yeah three in the morning yeah Yeah. (laughs) hey you're dead (laughs) breathe you're like what (laughs) I mean, there's got to be a more natural way than a CPAP machine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure something out. Yeah, yeah, it's called called losing losing weight. weight. (laughs) (laughs) All right, look, I was trying to figure uh, out smoother way to do this. Clay's like, all right, well, that's the end of the podcast. It is, it is. I just got the five minute warning. Honestly, Uh, (laughs) that's a great place to end it, (laughs) dude. All right. It's not a good sign when you get sleep hey, apnea while you're awake. You anything you want to plug? I guess. And you said that, no, I was like, here it comes. <laughs> Craig's just like, I rest my case. That's what I want to plug. <laughs> Booyah. That's my credit. Uh, uh, we could have skipped today, Justin. <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude. Justin's like, can we put on pants? What the fuck? All right. Um, it was great to have you on, Craig. Thank uh, you. Lovely to be here as always. Yeah. Always fun. Uh, thank you for coming on, Gene. We got to explain a little bit of the book to you hopefully oh, thank you. you might possibly not read it yeah it's a train that says the n-word of course i'm gonna read it <laughs> um i thank you melissa for the argument early on uh yeah you know, my pleasure anytime yeah <laughs> all right and uh check out all the podcasts on the youtube uh the creek and cave studio youtube page uh check out all our episodes and all the other podcasts highly social all that shit uh, and uh, check me out. My name is Mud9210 uh, on Instagram. Melissa Diaz, number four, you on Instagram for Melissa. Yes. Uh, Craig, your Instagram? Craig Fergola. Uh, At, and on whatever. Instagram. Instagram, yeah. And Gene? Gene Getman. Cool. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.